Greetings. Good morning. Good day. Big welcome to you. Welcome to you. Yes, and so because we are all post retreat now, I want to speak a little bit about integration. And I get this question often. I think it's a, a helpful reminder that, you know, we really sit with this question. Well, how do I integrate? Like, how do I integrate on the spiritual path? And it's important to just ask, well, what do, what do I need to integrate? Like, what do I need to integrate? Like, what does that mean to integrate? In a sense, to integrate is to give yourself and your life over to God. <laughs> like that's what it means on an ultimate sense. And so often when we think of integration is we think of like, I get to keep my normal human egoic sense of self and I'm just learning some new things and I'm adding it to my tool bag. Now the problem with Kundalini and integration is Kundalini or spiritual awakening is wanting to totally transform your sense of self. You know, and most of us, we identify as being a, an egoic human being. And our ego is in charge and our ego tends to have its foot on the brakes in this process of spiritual awakening. And so in order for integration to happen, we have to first take our feet off the brakes and to allow whatever is here to be here and to be here fully so that we can learn from it so that we can learn from it and this is what we did on retreat when we go on retreat it's like we're taking both feet off the brakes and we're saying i open and i surrender and i receive and so after we've done that well what's our next step our next step really in a human sense is just to slow down in life to slow down and many of you, as you see, like you, you have found yourself on this path of awakening and you might find yourself already with a lot of time in bed, a lot of time laying in the backyard, you know, a lot of time being silent. And that's the thing you need to do. Now, we live in a culture and a society that's telling you, you always need to be out working and making money and, you know, conquering the world and being an internet sensation or this and that. But really for most of us, like the actual work begins with a willingness to slow down the unconscious busyness of life. To slow down the unconscious busyness of life and to really check in with your body, your humanity and the interaction between this awakening energy, which is timeless, eternal, of course, beyond abundant, you know, it's like abundantly abundant. And that means it's a lot. It's a lot. And so we have this massive energy that's flowing through us, but we, we do have a limited body. And this is something that we have to acknowledge. And this, this keeps us humble just to acknowledge my humanity is limited. And the way most people interact with this of having too much light and you know a body that's limited is they try to talk to god or scream at god god stop stop like this is too much it's too much and sometimes you know it, it is just too much for our body but again i i always just tend to um how should i say this uh bow before the intelligence of the divine. And I trust that God in all of her grand intelligence, she knows what she's doing. Now, it might not make any sense to us. And that's another hallmark of integration is integration a lot of times, if it's true integration, is, is, a, is an experience, a process that does not make sense to our human mind. Doesn't make sense. I've had so many things after a retreat or after a big opening that I'm still holding on to and I'm fighting with and I'm struggling. And finally, I let go of that thing. 
you know, I let go of my limited view. And that is the moment when integration begins to take place. And then something new just drops down into my consciousness. And I realize, oh, oh, okay. This is a much greater truth than my small human truth. And so with the process of integration, and we have to slow down and we have to have a willingness to continue to feel, continue to let go, continue to question, continue to receive from a place of humility, trusting that God knows something greater than we do. And of course, that's the case. Like, of course, the creator knows more than the creation. Of course. Of course. Of course. But many of us, when we struggle with integration, we struggle often with parts of our egoic nature that complain and that are aching, that are hurting. And rightly so, like rightly so, like there's human parts of us that just have a hard time with this immense transformation. And so a lot of people, when they speak about integration, they're speaking about this point of contact between the stressed ego and this mass of light. The stressed ego and this mass of light. And it's important to help and soothe our ego and our body so that it can relate to the divine as a support. And for most of us, like we have to do deep somatic body work and a retraining of the body and the nervous system so that it knows, okay, I can relax, I can trust, I don't need to fight with this energy of awakening. I may not understand it, but I don't need to fight with it. And normally the ego just is unconscious and it just says, I don't understand it, so I do need to fight with it. That's what an unconscious ego does is like, I don't understand it, so I need to fight with it. And this is like the common allergy response in the human body is the human body says, I don't know what pollen is, but I need to fight with it. <laughs> it creates this allergic response, you know, within the immune system. You know, we have all these antihistamines and just all this nasal congestion that's firing. And it's just a confusion. It's just a confusion. Or we get very scared, very scared. And we start to fight something we don't need to fight. Like, wouldn't it be funny if our world, like if the United States and the Russians, realized we don't need to fight. <laughs> like, we don't need to fight. We don't need to fight. And then the world could integrate. The world could integrate in a way where we could develop healthy relationships. And we could have, you know, trade with each other and alliances. And, you know, we could support each other across the globe. But humans often just make this mistake of, I need to fight with something I don't understand. And as we begin to integrate, often we have to teach our body. We have to teach our body, I don't need to fight. I can relax and I can receive. And I can check in with my intelligence and see what would I like to do intentionally. So post retreat or anytime we're trying to integrate, like we have lots of energy in us and it's stuck in the heart, we might set the intention. I'm setting the intention to open my heart, to work with my heart, to listen to my heart, to see why energy gets stuck in my heart, to examine my heart. And so we take some time and we really focus in on the heart and asking, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? How can I help you to open? How can I support you? Is there something you need to let go of first that's getting in the way? That's creating this, this difficulty between the kundalini flowing and the ego relaxing. Like what's creating this difficulty here? 
And so much of this path of integration will teach you how to lovingly attend to your body. And so again, the first thing is going to be slowing down. You know, the second thing is going to be like opening and listening. You know, the third thing might be like noticing where does energy get stuck? Where does it get stuck within my nervous system? Or for some people, it's where do I go numb and where do I check out? Because if there's any place in the body where we're going numb and we're checking out, or we feel like we need to disassociate, that's a place we certainly need to integrate. Certainly need to integrate. And then the fourth thing, I think we're on number four here, is the fourth thing is we need to be intentional and ask some intentional questions. And we're asking the intuitive guidance of the kundalini, the intuitive guidance of our heart, the intuitive guidance of our body to show us where we could soften, where we could melt, where we could receive. And sometimes the intuitive guidance of the body will tell you things you need to let go of. You know, like alcohol, of course, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't jive well with kundalini. Uh, caffeine, you know, I think a little bit of caffeine is okay for some people, but you certainly can't have a lot of caffeine. You know, a big part of our culture is caffeine and alcohol. You, know, you can't be up all night, not sleeping, you know, endlessly distracting, you know, on the internet. And some people just, you know, they struggle with exhaustion and kundalini, but then they'll stay up all night. It's like, hey, like, that just doesn't work. Like, you have to take care of your body. If you try to live a life without meditation or without some body-based form of meditation, like yoga or walking or tai chi, God, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We're not going to support ourselves in integrating. If your body is tight and tense and telling you, screaming at you, I need someone to teach me to relax. And we have kundalini like trying to flow through a nervous system that's like a brick. And we ignore, you know, one, the kundalini, and two, the body telling us, hey, I could benefit from some yoga. And so with integration, we really have to listen to the points where the energy gets stuck, where the energy gets stuck. And so I'm going to invite everyone to shut down their eyes, and just to take some breaths. And really feeling into the body. and inviting ourselves to slow down, to slow down. It's almost like we're coming to a full stop, a full stop. And so we're stopping you know, the busyness, the mental activity, the running off into the future. And we are being here now. And we are consciously acknowledging That there is this light here that is flowing through us, this radiance. And we are inviting our body and our nervous system to open and to receive. In a gentle and loving way. Open and receive in a gentle and a loving way. We're inviting our body to 
relax and to cooperate with the energies that are here. To cooperate with the intelligence of God and the energies of grace. And so as we feel throughout the body, we just notice where the energy gets stuck. And so common places are energy can get stuck in the head and the forehead, the jaw, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the hara, the pelvis. Now they're the <laughs> very normal places where energy to get stuck is in this seven chakra center. So it can get stuck in other places in the body too. But we spoke about this on retreat that energy tends to get stuck in the egoic manifestation of the chakra centers. And I want you to feel into whichever center you feel that the energy is getting stuck in mostly. Just feeling into that center. And asking the energy, asking your body, Even asking the ego psychology, what can I do to cooperate with what's here? What can I do? To cooperate. And even just beginning to imagine the body opening more fully and receiving more fully this light and this love, this peace. And also surrendering more fully. I can see a couple of you in this room have lost faith in the power, the ability to heal, the power, the ability to integrate. And for some of us, our body has gotten, has been stubborn. And that makes the body strong in an egoic sense when it's stubborn. It's not a judgment. Sometimes when it's stubborn, it's hard for new things to flow. It's hard for this energy to cut new channels. To cut new channels. I want you to look into your body and honestly see, is there anything stubborn within me? Because <laughs> stubborn is, is a point of resistance against integration. And so if there's anything stubborn, I want you to smile a little bit. <laughs> you know what the stubbornness. Like, oh yeah, look, I have some stubbornness in the body. And that helps to break it up. It helps to loosen it up. If we can admit there's something stubborn here. I 
And if anyone here is having any vision of a war between the Kundalini and their body, I want to invite you to change that vision to the Kundalini working with your body, the body working with Kundalini, things falling, falling, falling into place. Resistance beginning to break and lift. This light tenderizing, healing and softening the body. Softening the body. Again, so something greater can come. Now, a few of you here have some things that need to be surrendered. So this energy can flow. And so I want you to really ask to honestly ask to look deeply. Is there something here? Some type of fear. Some type of old heartache. Some old habitual way of being that's it's just purely habit. It's just purely habit. Some of you have some old haunting addictions or harshness and judgment of oneself. These are the things that need to be surrendered if we're going to integrate. Some of you have a harshness and walls I have a jadedness. And again, are you willing to let go of this? So that something greater than harshness and jadedness can take root. Some of you continue to judge yourself. It's very hard for this energy to wake up and establish itself in the space of the heart. If we're busy judging ourselves or judging others, these things just don't, they don't go well together. <laughs> it's like oil and water. You can't mix judgment and love. It doesn't work too well. Some of you have, are trying to open but have no faith. And again, like that's, <laughs> that's a hard thing to open without faith. Without trust, as we open and then the body clamps down. So again, I want you just to look and see what is your flavor of resistance. And again, we're breathing. Feeling. We're softening and opening. So just inviting a gentle attention and the bottoms of the feet, inviting the feet to be relaxed and this energy to flow up through the bottoms of the feet, through the legs through the root and through the hara, through the solar plexus, the 
ultimately integration It's a movement of being radically open and surrendered to the divine. This energy flowing up from the root, through the hara, through the solar plexus, going into the heart, clearing out any heaviness and denseness in the first three chakras, clearing out the heart, Finding this flow of divinity to flow the chest, to flow the abdomen, to fill it up, fill it up, flowing and filling up through the throat chakra, through the third eye, up and out of the crown, this column of light flowing up from the earth and aiding this process of integration, of healing. Clearing out. And finally, the final step of integration is choosing the truth. Choosing to live the truth. To embody the truth. to be the truth in this world. And just noticing the joy of integration, the joy of choosing the truth over choosing the darkness or the ego's way. It's this gentle joy of choosing the truth. If there's still some things that need to be worked out, I invite you to trust that as you continue to open and relax, all will be sorted out. All will be sorted out. All will be brought into the light. Okay. And so when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. And for this week's sharing, and we'll share about this process of integration and where you struggle and what are some of the realizations that you need to let go of or where you could open more, what parts of your life you could put in check. You, know, you could really look at, okay, well, how do I support myself in integrating? You know, Neil told me this story of, um, and he got in a little accident this last weekend you know, on uh, what we call here in the United States, like a bike trail or the bike lane, right? You know, like when you're on a bike lane, like it's one direction because there's bicycles, there's people walking fast and riding. It's like, it's one direction. He said they were doing some construction in his town. And so they didn't have the bike lane on the other side of the street. And so people were using the bike lane in both directions. And when we mess up the process of integration, like that's what we're doing. Our ego is going one way and the truth is going the other. And we come into this collision. And that's not the way to integrate. We need the ego to give way, egoic tendencies, you know, of addiction or anger or judgment or contraction or self-hatred or whatever. We can't have it running the wrong way. We, need, we can't have it being in charge. We need these things to step out of the way so this other energy can flow so that this other energy can flow. And so I'm gonna invite you to share uh, today in alignment with the things that you've, you've struggled with. Okay. 